This is our third railway community call. Um, we are doing this at a time where it, it is not usually the time where we kind of host these community calls. It's Monday, sorry, it's a Friday on 5 p.m., but there's a lot of things happening at Railway. But also before we even do anything, it'd be great um, to make sure that we are kind of thinking about these things uh, properly and correctly. A uh, way we're going to be doing this is um, for the folks in the audience who are here, um, if you raise your hand, we'll bring you up. Uh, you answer any question that you have about Railway, about the disappointing loss uh, of Brazil today, and uh, anything else uh, that, that could be related or, or the pain points into uh, the experience on Railway. Um, we are closing the year out, so I guess we'll get through a little bit of some housekeeping first. So we've, uh, the team uh, is about to enter into the planning for the next year. So this is kind of where we take this opportunity to really figure out what is top of mind, um, such as multi-region, and then kind of break that down into smaller engineering tasks for the rest of the team. So we've been spending a lot of the last, uh, basically, um, we've been spending a lot of our effort kind of re focusing on the public API, which we have announcements about this later today. Uh, and a lot of our efforts on kind of improving the variables experience while the infrastructure team has kind of been doing work to support the influx of new users. And we, <laughs> we've we had quite a bit. So next year, it's, it's going to be really aiming to knock out all of these highly anticipated features that uh, most, uh, I think most of you all have, have been waiting on. So it's something that I think we're, we're pretty we're pretty excited to, to, to work on and announce. Now, with that said, um, if uh, people have any questions about the railway's roadmap or state of the product, unfortunately, this is not a support call. So like if you come up here with like, oh, my thing's not working um, after the call, I promise to get to your help issue. Um, but this is mostly about about features and uh, our, our, our long term uh, roadmap. With that said, so if um, if I guess people can raise their hands on the audience or if they oh that is possible or we got Jackson and then we can start answering questions. And then again, if we don't have any questions up here, then uh, we got plenty of Slido. Also, actually, a lot of good ones over in Slido. So Jackson, kick us off. Uh, what, what do you, um, what's on your mind? For sure. For sure. This may be kind of a banger to kick it off. But um, as far as I'm aware, Railway is a service hosted on the back of GCS. And now I'm not sure you know, what cost optimizations and discounts you guys are using. But I assume that as you scale, something will have to be done in order to maintain or increase some sort of bottom line profit margin in order for this to be feasible, right? So I guess, have you put a lot of thought into that? And um, yeah, that's basically it. Jesus, what a banger. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so I think I think we can we can speak to this. So first off, I, I want to say, uh, talk about that the nature of startups. So you know, when we go out into the market and we ask investors um, about, you know, building a new tool such as Railway, you know, I think there is a lot of risk that comes with that. When I say risk, I mean reputational risk, um, stuff that, you know, I, again, I'm not Cooper, but on his behalf, right, that he shouldered, that the team shouldered, and then risk also financial, right? So um, when it comes to cost optimization in a cloud world. I actually can speak to a little bit about this because my prior role at, over at Citrix is actually working with cloud providers and partnering with them and trying to get the best um, kind of cloud deals. And the one thing you later learn about infrastructure is actually how crazy of a high margin business it is. And so a good example right now is uh, AWS's EC2 instances, and this is not you know not intended to be a shot across the bow for them, but it just kind of tells you how profitable it is for the big public clouds. Is uh, they are able to package and sell you know 2016 era Xeon server chips, which you know today are worth a fifth of what they're actually worth, and then rent them to you at enormous costs, uh, and and that's where their margins come from. So I think like I think I, I haven't checked the latest AWS. Uh, you know, quarterly report, but I think they, ref you know, they refer to their hardware offering, you know, 60% margin. And then they talk about their storage offering with around like 70% profit margin. So, so I, there's other costs that kind of come into it, such as R&D and whatnot. But, you know, the, the public cloud is a great business. And the one thing that we at Railway are at, first and foremost, are historians. And we recognize that we come before or we come after 
the hosting solutions of the early 2000s, you know, some of which we may or may not remember, um, such as Rackspace and Heroku. And the one thing that Heroku unfortunately wasn't able to get was the margin situation. And I kind of, you know, fell into situations where they are with Salesforce. And although, again, this is my, now I'm speaking in my personal opinion, it's just a story, not on behalf of Railway. But um, we take that co con context of the past and bring it forward into how we decide to do. So, you know, we, we have, I think we're going to be staying on GCP for quite some time, um, you know, into the next year. I don't think if there's any, any immediate plans to, to do anything there. You know, we, the folks there that we've been working with have been fin nothing short of fantastic. But, you, you know, uh, in order for you to deliver the service that, that we want to do, I think this is kind of related to what some asks have been, we've been getting from customers. You know, we, not in near term, but long term, we want to figure out some elegant solution to having users bring their public cloud subscriptions to Railway. You know, we can't, you know, quite frankly, compete with AWS is going to a startup and being like, well, here's $10,000 of free credit. And we want you to be able to get your maximum uh, worth from that um, at one point. But the other thing is that we're also looking into is, you know, partnering with other hardware providers and partnering with data, data center. I don't think railway is going to be in the business of actually constructing data center itself. But the way when you hear a lot of these other companies, when they mention about having their own data centers, what they usually enter into is what they, what's called a um, co-location agreement. So, you know, we're, 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 we're keeping all options on the table. In terms of like, you know, profitability and sustainability, I think, you know, we're not, we're not in the business of selling, you know, $2 for the cost of $1. And I think we're, we're okay with, you know, right now focusing on building the best developer experience there and then keeping an eye on the future of making sure everything aligns in the end. And it's been a few of our internal conversations. So with that said, I, I, I think the, the main crux of the, of the question trying to answer is like, well, is railway building sustainably or is it just going to like, you know, uh, disappear six months down the line and, and, you know, run out of money? I think the answer is definitely not. Uh, you know, we're in talks with a lot of, you know, really cool companies and really cool startups and ourselves, right? We want to be there uh, for the long haul. And, and part of that also means, you know, building sustainably, which means, you know, like highly anticipated features that people have been asking for this past year. We haven't been able to get to it because we want to make sure we make the right decisions and planning like we are a company that's going to exist in five to 10 years rather than one that is just, you know, kind of going for broke and building everything that we can. So great question, Jackson. And, uh, and yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Amazing response. Cool. Everything. Thank you. Uh, do we have any of the other questions from the audience over? You can raise your hand. If not, I have one from Slido. Um, I think it's probably the biggest one that everyone came here to listen to, um, in my guess. All right, I don't see any hands, so I, I guess I'll jump into it. So we got the first question over in Slido has the most upvotes. Uh, while we're here, actually, I'm just gonna post the link. All right, uh, any news time frame regarding multiple region support? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, first off, I want to just apologize on how on how long it's been taking. Um, I guess we'll 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 talk a little bit about what we've been doing. I guess like the last six months to kind of support this work. So uh, for the record, uh, Railway has just, I think, crossed like a barrier where we're growing like exponentially fast compared to when I first joined the company. So unfortunately, we've been spending an inordinate amount of time f supporting existing use cases. And, you know, we, we've introduced, you know, we, we've hired a lot in the infrastructure background. I, I wish uh, time zones are um, unfortunately not working, but, you know, it would have been great to introduce Koi on this call. Um, and you know, five who also just joined us on the infrastructure side, they've been doing, I think a fantastic job making sure that, uh, our platform is much more stable and much more responsive. So we, what we've been doing is slowly, but surely we've been moving over our platform, um, over to a Kubernetes back system of deployments and rollouts. So before we kind of home rolled our own scheduler and home rolled a number of items, um, and now we're at the point where we finally have, I would say, like a suitable pod-based infrastructure for Railway. So right now, um, Railway itself uh, is running on Kates. However, the workloads are still running off of our homegrown scheduler, which, you know, has been working all right. But I don't think it's it's optimal. And I think you guys know it's not super optimal, especially when it comes to databases. You know, some things kind of 
you know, tilt over. If, if network is, you know, too busy or if CPU is too busy on a host, we have to do manual intervention there, which, you know, quite frankly, f sucks for the end user experience and sucks for, um, <laughs> sucks for us too. You know, we want to be able to give you, you know, high resiliency there. Talks about railway the last five, six months of just the work we've been doing to sustain, um, the, you know, the, keeping the lights on. So what our goal right now for multiple regions or selectable region is we want to take this same, what we want to do is we want to take this same level of like scheduling and pod management that we have for our own infrastructure and then apply that to the use containers. So then what we can do is we can kind of in theory, um, you know, what if a user is like, Hey, uh, I have, um, I have this workload in, you know, us West and I want to have my exact same configuration that I have in US West over in EU West, you can, in theory, right, take the railway config and just destroy it over on the other side. Whereas on other cloud platforms, you have to like set up a separate subscription, like in Azure, which I'm used to, you set up a whole separate subscription and you have to import everything and it's just a, a massive pain. So that's the reason why it's been taking so long. With that said, um, we want to work on this immediately as soon as possible <laughs> come next year. Uh, as usual, I can't give timelines because at the end of the day, I don't want to, it's unfair to, you know, for unfair for my big mouth to put our engineers on a hook for, you know, an engineering timeline. So I, I can't commit to one, but I, I can tell you for, for instance, I think it's something that everyone here at Railway wants and we can't wait to get it right. But the good news is that I, this one, you know, major blocker from the Kubernetes setup and pod setup, um, you know, milestone that, that we cross, I think is a big one. Um, so yeah, I, I hope that answers your question. It's a little non-answery, but we, we, we're working really hard on it and we want to make sure that, that it's right. With that said, um, we're collecting more requirements. So tell us about your use case. We react, you know, we read the canny, we respond to all those things there. Uh, we can get you, you know, in the right direction there. Uh, I see Michael with his hand up, uh, so I'm going to go have him, have him up and, uh, we have the next question there. Hey, Michael, thanks for joining us. Hey, happy to be here. Um, I was just wondering if there was anything on the roadmap or any plans to support uh, like key management or secret management. Um, you know, I love the like bulk import for the, for the dot end, but you know, is there any plans to do something a little more robust than that? Um, great question. So uh, this is kind of related to what someone else on the, the Slido board mentioned related to Doppler integration. So I think the answer there is, is, is actually yes. So, First is we're going to have it uh, working within um, having a Doppler integration for, for that secret management first. Um, we've also added shared variables, which I think is kind of like part of that roadmap of, of more robust secrets management. Um, but I do also have a clarifying question, I guess, like what's, what's the use case that you right now you want to support at the moment? So is it, is it basically variable management outside of railway or being able to have like an API over your secrets talk elsewhere Can you provide a little bit more color there? Yeah. You know, like if I had, um, you know, secrets and build, you know, variables in say like HashiCorp vault, um, in a separate instance that I wanted to, you know, plug into the build process on railway. Oh, okay. Now, see, that's, that's fascinating. I, so I think you're the first person who's requested at least like vault support within railway. I guess like, so what would, what would solve your problem in theory, right? Is if we were able to take your cash corp vault instance and then be made aware of it and then use it for builds and whatnot. Exactly. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. This is actually, this is actually pretty cool. What I'm going to do actually is um, I'm going to go write this down. I'll bring it back to Greg right now, the engineer who works on uh, variables and whatnot. He's actually uh, pair, pair programming with a, a team member. So I really wish he heard this conversation right now. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, we definitely do have plans there on the roadmap. Um, I think nothing specifically to Vault, but we were working with Doppler um, with the, the API. And again, that's a, a bunch of stuff that we want to talk about. Uh, actually supporting them within Railway so they can you know, have them be the, the source of truth for your, for your secrets and variables management. Uh, we're also working on, uh, I guess, like a better CI, like GitHub Actions experience, like getting your Railway secrets out into Vercel and GitHub Actions is not super elegant right now. So it's something that we're also looking into. So the answer is not on the roadmap yet, but I think you just kind of opened up a can of worms that we would love to dig, dig, dig into. So we can definitely talk offline and 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 make sure that it's designed to, to your your and other user specifications. Happy to hear it. Cool. Thank you so much, Michael. I'm going to go jump to the next one question here. Any updates regarding support for external logging services? 
Datadog, Axiom, etc. Um, this is also another big one I think we ourselves kind of notice. Um, I think right now the answer is, is it's on the roadmap for sure. I think the uh, there's a major prerequisite that we want to do is actually just making sure that the logging is just accessible by API first. So at the moment right now, um, and, I, and I don't want to get this into like a big giant rant about the API here, is we've been spending a lot of our time lately kind of porting existing API routes um, from our from Railway's like front end interface over to kind of the next version of, of a GraphQL IP, uh, interface that we have. So we kind of crossed that milestone and we, we, we launched it on behind Teams, which we are working with a few team partners um, to get them successful. And, and we, we've, we've been finding a, few, a little bit of success there. We've been seeing from, from y'all that, you know, we want to be able to expose the API to end users as well. So the, con the plans are not super final here, but the situation that we do have is... Um, we want to kind of open it up to users and then kind of see what users make with that, if that makes sense. So the, our initial concern when we made the API and, and about the access to the API is not because we want to make money off of it. It's more so we want to make sure that we have the bandwidth internally right, to support those requests. It's just kind of a way to prioritize those requests. Um, so now since we think we've kind of solved those cases, I think that's the next step for us. So in for the external logging services in order to be able to kind of pipe out you know, now speaking as an engineer and, you know, it sounds like, it sounds like to us, we would have to have some sort of like WebSocket API or some socket connections API with Datadog. So at the moment right now, what we do is we kind of tell users to, you know, put your DD key and kind of, you know, route your logs that way. But uh, honestly, I think um, that's going to require a little bit more design on our, on our front. So it's not, it's not going to be soon to set the, the proper expectation there, but it's something that we, we have been thinking about. Kind of, kind of hopefully answer that question. Um, let me just check the chat here make sure that the updates on private networking. Yes, <laughs> definitely. We definitely have updates on private networking. So, uh, good news. So we, uh, Char, who was here on the last community call, um, uh, he joined us, uh, actually to work on the networking side of our infrastructure. So that has been, uh, wonderful and, and fantastic, uh, to, to have, to have him on board. And, you know, uh, I really wish he was here to listen to, to me kind of compliment him behind his back, but, uh, he's been doing a fantastic job there. So, um, I think two things. So one, one is we've been working on our proxy to make it more resilient. Uh, I know that was a source of complaints, you know, six months ago, very lucky to very, very happy to kind of come back to y'all and be like, well, it's not as much of an issue as it is today. The other thing when it comes to private networking, um, so we're now able, we, we've now kind of, I think made, and I really hope he was here to kind of like qualify my statements, but we've now made, I think like a, like a proof of concept of, of our services kind of acting in isolation. And this is really related to, to our multiple region support. So the way we kind of foresee how these features kind of existing is we really want to have a user you know, be able to go into the railway canvas, draw boundaries of services that talk to each other. And then like your visual diagram of your services is essentially the source of truth of how it behaves from a network perspective. And I think that's just, you know, really cool. We, we uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Finn, <laughs> I think it would be really, really awesome if we get there. And then the cool thing is that once we kind of get to this, like, you know, uh, zero to one type of deployment flow, what we can then do is you can, in theory, right, when it, once you kind of define your own project in an environment that you like, then you can kind of like take that whole, you know, boundary and then just be like, all right, take this um, and just make it talk to, to EU West. So I, 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 so it's very likely that we're going to have, we're going to see private networking, you know, before selectable region. But I, I think private networking is the first thing that the infrastructure team is kind of gunning for after these foundational infrastructure improvements are, are in place. Um, again, no timelines as usual, because I don't, I don't want to go, you know, you know, back to Charif and be like, Hey, I said, it's going to come out in a month. Can you, you know, can you please do that? I don't, I don't think we'll be, we'll be happy with that, but I do. I, I, it's something that we've been thinking about. We, we have a lot of specs and a lot of design documents kind of written out here. We have a really good idea of like what private networking is going to look like finally, which something that we couldn't have said uh, a year ago, you know, even before Metro was launched. 
So we're now at the point where I think we're kind of happy with how the multi-service experience is on railway. You know, a year ago, we were kind of, we, we were here in this moment talking about mono repos and supporting it the best way we can. So I think we're, we're somewhat happy with that experience and we're, you know, somewhat happier with, with our, uh, I would say, um, uh, build experience, although Nixpax has, has a lot of improvements to go. Um, but I, I, we're slowly but surely starting to get there. And then I think the next step, the chair on top, in my opinion, would be in private networking. Because uh, I think the biggest use case that we see from users talking to us about private networking is database access and control and you know internal worker services. So um, we know that not everything should be on the public internet, uh, but um, we want to make it so that, that you guys can have a really good DevX there. Cool. Um, all right, I'm starting to see the question shift right in front of me. Uh, which is good. Um, I kind of addressed uh, the Doppler slash uh, variable roadmap a little bit via the D D Doppler stuff. So I hope NIF's question was answered. And if not, they can get it on re the, uh, the recording. Just as a quick reminder here, you can raise your hand here on the stage. We'll bring you right up and you can ask your question directly to us just in case. Just want to get a brief second there. And the only other thing actually is actually, um, I'm not sure if David is ready to talk or not, but I do want to have him introduce themselves they just recently joined railway so he can take the invitation there and say hi if he wants to hey david sure hey how's it going going well going well i'm just you know standing here on this virtual stage um you want to take a second to say hi to everyone uh you just joined and and uh tell everyone how, what you do over here yeah cool thanks uh hey everybody i'm david i'm usually based in New York City, but these days I'm in the San Francisco area. I'm doing product marketing and growth stuff with uh, with Railway. I've uh, come over from the machine learning space and infrastructure space, so I'm excited to be here and looking forward to a bunch of projects. We've got some really cool stuff that's rolling out and starting in January. We're going to start telling a lot more stories about things that our users are doing. Uh, if you feel like you're uh, using railway in a really interesting way that um, that our community would like to learn more about. I'd love to talk to you. Uh, maybe we can find a way to publicize some of the stuff you're doing. And uh, we're going to start talking more about the story behind uh, the company itself, how we're designing a bunch of processes and just sort of show a lot more of, uh, of, of what's going on. It's a really exciting roadmap. Uh, the, the big thing that's going to drop in early January is our 2023 roadmap and everything will uh, come after that. So exciting times ahead. Thank you, David. Yeah. And, and for the record, everyone, everyone here and, and this server, you know, at least me, I, I read the fire hose there. So a lot of your input, right, makes it into that roadmap. And again, if you're working on something cool and you think uh, it deserves uh, a look over, um, David is your guy. Thank you, David. I'm going to jump right back into it. No, I accidentally kind of act, oh, I moved him around. I'm so sorry. That, that was a logistics thing. Sorry. Uh, next question. Um, yeah. So uh, real quick. Uh, um, any any? Uh, <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is embarrassing. I'm dying. Um, any any plans for implementation of restart button for databases? Um, I, this is actually something that's coming out probably by next changelog. Uh, we we shipped this I think two weeks ago. Um, and, uh, it's something that we've, we've been doing internally, so you can technically do it now already. If you join priority boarding, um, something that we kind of have out, uh, things just needed a little bit more confidence and testing on our end. And, uh, we can, we can kind of get this out. Uh, so the answer is, um, it's coming def very soon. Question after that, uh, any news or time frame regarding support for wildcard domain wildcard custom domain name uh so the answer is yes it's it's going to happen definitely going to happen we have a um david's actually writing a blog post about this about kind of how we ideate features from user feedback all the way to kind of how it's shipped on railway so stay tuned for that so the reason why i bring that up is we're working on uh we every single new feature in railway has a request for comment in rfc so we already have a, an rfc written on this so Greg is the engineer, I think, responsible for building this, and it's on the it's on the roadmap for sure. Uh, not sure when. I think the situation why it hasn't been implemented immediately is because we want our implementation of wildcard domain 
uh, support to not interfere with the planned coming work on to private networking. So we want to make sure that those things kind of coordinate, if I recall correctly, on on the velocity there. Um, so uh, I think that's our status there. And, uh, here we go. Uh, we got a question from Alfredo. What is an underused feature from railway users? It's a good one. Underused. Hmm. This is actually kind of stumping me right now. I could just jump into the usage database and stuff for not now. I think, I think uh, one one thing I actually kind of will bring up at least something that I kind of wish something that people I think would kind of use a little bit more is um, uh, the Nix packs. I think like Tommel. Um, but it's also like a weird thing, right? Cause like if railway does its job, you don't need to use the configuration at all. So it's kind of something I'm a little happy. That's a little underused. If that makes sense. But I, I think that the configuration is code. I think something is something that the whole team here is kind of eager for adoption, mostly because, you know, as, as teams scale, you kind of want this like level of predictability. And we have, I think this philosophy, uh, uh, philosophy of, um, yeah, that's true. Actually, in here, I'm gonna. I, I I might have an opinion, but uh, I also David I think has his own. We're bringing the whole team up here. Sorry for that whole thing. Hope you forgive me for that for that little um, awkward <laughs> snap food there. But yeah, for me, I think it's a configuration code. But I think you have your own answer to this question, right? Oh yeah. Well, I was just gonna say the public API that's been put into priority boarding for team users. So it's not very discoverable yet, but. That's something I'm really looking forward to seeing expanded use for. Yeah, we'll, we'll fix it uh, soon, trademark. <laughs> but I, I, we, we want to really expand the access there. Um, uh, cool. What uh, Do we have another one um, that goes, uh, what are the challenges of scaling a service like Railway? From same person, Alfredo, over here. Um, geez, man, that's... That's uh, that's rough. Um, well, I mean rough. I mean like, there's a lot that's just been happening lately. Um, yeah, I, I, so first off, I just want to kind of say frankly that startups are a lot of work. Um, and if anyone here is thinking about starting an infrastructure startup, uh, just understand that you will be putting in a lot of, uh, putting in a lot of work and effort, right, to keep workloads up. And I, I would I want to say for the record, it's it's immensely rewarding to be able to talk to everyone here uh, and all of our users about what they what they do. I, 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 there's actually no better joy about finding out and being surprised from you know the community about what they work on. And I think that's what, that's my that's what keeps me going personally. So you know I, I think there's the obvious technical challenges that. You know, end of the day, like there's you know obvious solutions for you know like just get a bigger box, <laughs> just you know write a little bit more predictable infrastructure. But I think the biggest challenge, honestly, of being part of this ride is is the emotional one. And when I mean emotional, I mean I think there's a lot of trust that it takes to run a service like Railway that you guys place into us that I don't ever, and I'm pretty sure the team never forgets that trust. And I think that's the hardest part is scaling that trust because you, you know, you, we want you guys to be successful and we know that your, your startups or will be, or your workloads will be more and more successful. And that comes with bigger and greater challenges. So that's something that we, we really, uh, we really take, take the heart. Um, okay. we got some cool, you know, some questions coming in too. I want to make sure to be fair to the ones who asked a little earlier here. So I'll make our way down there. Please make the public API available for single developers willing to pay extra for it. We kind of answered that question. It is going to come out to users, more users. We don't have a, a, a plan there. Uh, we're a little, you know, we're a little worried of just being like, all right, give it to every single one because we want to make sure that we have like proper rate limiting in place and whatnot. But I think, um, I think back of napkin, don't quote me on this. Don't hold me to this. I think we just might give it to every single dev plan user and see how that is and then David will work on making it more discoverable and we'll we'll do a, a whole launch around that. Um, next one, any plans for schedule or cron type on railway native service? Um, that's a good question. Uh, maybe. So, and here here's the reason why I'm the team's been a little non-committal there. So we kind of think that 
you know, if you if you have like a, a if you have like a service of Lego blocks and you're able to kind of build whatever you want, we want to make it so that whatever your use cases are, you can kind of reach for and answer that with whatever solutions that we have off the shelf. And whenever I see, at least me personally, whenever I see requests for, you know, cron tab support or scheduler support, uh, which, which again, I, I think a lot of users from Heroku want and, and like, um, but it, it's not something that's, I think, super deterministic because you have to kind of rely on the platform fully for that. What I hope or whatever, when I see this is I kind of foresee you know, I think us just investing a little bit more in the templates ecosystem that we have. And maybe the answer is maybe just railway spending a little bit more time on the templates themselves and having really good answers, really good language specific answers to, you know, your cron tabs, your salary workers, right. That, that kind of run on, on a cron. So that's kind of the way, way, you know, we're thinking about it. The answer is it's not a no, you know, entirely. And we might end up just building a cron service, but in the context of private networking, in the context of selectable region and all those really big features that we want to build, you know, working on a scheduler or a cron type for a feature um, would kind of distract from those types of features that we want to build into next year. So that that's kind of why, you know, we feel the way that we feel about, about that request. Now, with that said, um, you let us know about our, your use case and you know, if it turns out that, you know, having a really elegant scheduling uh, system within Railway is going to, you know, make your development experience like 10 times better, then we want to hear about that. So please let us know. Um, all right, cool. Uh, next one over here. Any plans for a DB auto backup Railway native service? And this is a kind of a can of worms. Um, a can of worms in a good way because uh, we've been thinking a lot about databases on Railway and we know it's not, it's not the best. So I think... Um, so first off, I, I want to clear the answer is yes, we, we do want it. We don't want users to have to go into, you know, the AWS console and page out and, and having to set up an S3 bucket. The the blog post that we've written on this, uh, that Faraz written um, was, you know, as a stopgap because, because you know, data is important and, and we, you know, we talk about trust and, and being able to steward one's data, I think is a very important thing for us to do. So with that said, um, the answer is yes. I think... What we want to do first and foremost is actually just improve the database experience on railway period. A lot of you are here because you've heard of us, heard of us actually through our databases, right? Many of you were like, oh, I want to Postgres in, you know, five seconds. And we, we have provi provided that, um, I think, quite well. The, the, the questions that we want to answer is how do we make that, you know, five second to five day to five month to five year, you know, timeline on railway from a database perspective really good. And part of that is having native backups. I think the reason why we haven't, I guess, like been super proactive on this is one, you know, the whole team's been busy on other things, but I think also we want to make it so that when the experience is right, when it comes to data backups, we do have this kind of like really first class experience. I think we are kind of split and we want, we want your help here on how users kind of expect that backup experience to look like within the product, meaning that you know, we have a lot of users who are, who, who come to us and they're like, well, you know, I want my stuff to be on R2, S3, you know, don't, don't start within railway. It my, my security policies dictate that the backup, you know, like your fail safe shouldn't really live on railway itself, right? You want to have an external fail safe. So if something was to go wrong, you can go to a different cloud and, and get your, get your DB back up and running. So that's, that's one way we're kind of approaching it. The other way is, well, we have it just built into railway and you kind of have this like integrated you know, deploy slash like timeline flow, which I think would, you know, has a potential to be really cool, you know, so in the same way how you can go to a, a, a code service, you can kind of go back in time and press the redeploy button on like an any specific commit. You know, we are also thinking about building a DB experience that, that feels like you're traveling through time, but both efforts, you know, are, are not the types of feature design that unfortunately, at least, at least not obviously, uh, don't manifest themselves kind of clearly there. So we, we do need a little bit more help and uh, from the from the community on helping us design our backup uh, story and and having and having you guys you know validate it and test it. So it's something that we appreciate, but I think for us it's a yes. But we're just not sure what it looks like. And um, this is kind of me going to you and being like, well, <laughs> help. <laughs> so yeah. 
cool. Um, we're kind of nearing the last few questions of the event. Um, so uh, we're going to take, I think, two more, maybe three, and then we'll, we'll call it a day for this event. Last one, uh, Nif, Nif brought this up four minutes ago. Any new news on GPU support? Uh, hmm. Well, uh, David would, would, would love to probably pick this, the question up, but um, yeah, considering he used to be in the ML space. Uh, I, I think the answer is uh, we, we not anytime soon, uh, meaning we definitely do want to do it. I think it would be really sick if you can attach a GPU to your instance and you know do your thing with it. But I think also... You know, there's just other other things that we want to address too. You know, such as attachable file systems, such as again what we mentioned before. So I, I think for now the I think we'll leave it at that. It's not going to be probably happening anytime soon. As a quick reminder, because I know I've been you know rambling quite a bit. Um, if you have any questions, you can raise your hand and we can bring you up on stage and you can you can ask us anything. Um, but if not, I'm just going to make sure that we don't miss any questions here in the Slido. Okay, I think this is an important one. Um, a good way to close it off here. Um, so, uh, I, actually, two, the last two. So, we have our two. So, one here is uh, support for custom server time zones. Um, my back of napkin response is, uh, if you can tell us the use case for that, I think we'll be more than happy to look into that. Um, I, I think most of our users have been content with UTC. But if you can kind of tell us on like the time zone aspect of what you need to support, I think we're more than happy to help you there. And then last one, I think, which is a very meaty question, I'm very happy to, to answer. Will Railway find a way to bring Heroku Free Plans users itself uh, getting to bring more funds? I'm assuming that they're asking us about the revenue model to maybe provide more free resources. Um, it's a good question. I So a lot of you have who have been here kind of witnessed the uh, quite frankly, the pricing fiasco <laughs> of what um, of, of, of our new uh, pricing model that we introduced for the free plans, I think, you know, may, and it's been in place for some time now. So I, I, I want to first mention that railway doesn't, railway's aim is that, you know, when we offer our starter plan and our dev plan, our aim is that you will you know, like the platform enough that we can one learn from you about your developer use cases. For example, I, I recognize people here in the audience who, you know, have asked questions about Ruby on Rails, who are on the dev plan, who, you know, for us, it's it's really valuable for us to learn about their developer workflow. And that wouldn't have been possible if we charged railway, you know, hundred dollars to use up front. And for me as an engineer here, you know, our customer conversations to 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 me are are one of the more valuable things that that we have, so you know the the that that so that this you know comes from a place of, of of a lot of humbleness here. So you know thank you for that, right? But that's part of really what we have for the free plan here. So whenever we kind of think about our offering, the question that we really want to answer is like, if we were to make railway more free, would we learn anything new about our users that we don't already know? And I don't think that removing, for example, the hour limit or making, you know, restoring the Heroku like free plan um, is going to get us there. I think what will help us find, you know, more insight from our users is I think making things more understandable. And this is the reason why we changed the hour and the free plan limit to be just a flat 500 hours plus the credit. But I think there's more, you know, transparency that we can do in terms of our, our pricing and whatnot to make it so that the average developer who's learning, who's at school, um, can get the most out of Railway. Because at the end of the day where Railway does, and this is tied to Jackson's first question, you know, Railway makes money if you, as an individual hobby developer, goes to your boss or your manager and be like, hey, look, I tried out this thing, this really cool, awesome thing on my free time for my side projects. I think this can be benefit to this company. Or, you know, if you guys start your own company and you know, even if AWS is offering you a thousand dollars, right, to use their their platform, you know the you know you, you basically kind of putting your foot down, and being like, well, this experience is much better, and the time I save is worth more than any free credits I can receive. So that's kind of how we we that's how we, how we define success here. So I, I think the answer there is is no, you know, probably not going to make the starter plan more free, but. I think there's a lot of room for improvement in terms of making the legibility of railway uh, more obvious and 
I think, apparent to not only you guys as hobby developers, but also, you know, teams and also companies and whatnot. So that's kind of my, my response to that. With that said, I, I think we're at time. We've been uh, doing this uh, thing for, I think, 40 minutes now. So I, I want to thank you all for your questions, and I hope you have a wonderful Friday, and uh, we'll see you around the server. Thank you so much.